Hey all, it's me again. We're back with another YouTube video. Um, today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna break down a beat. This is a beat that I made from scratch a couple days ago, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to make a YouTube video on it. I'm gonna go into the sample project and break down the sample and then come back to this beat project and break down the beat. And I'm also trying this new format with no face cam in hopes to make these videos a little bit easier for me to record and edit them. So like we usually do, I'm gonna play a minute of this beat so I can listen to it and then we're gonna come back and go into the sample project, break that down, come back to the, to the drums. I'm gonna play this and we'll see each other on the other side. So we're back and we're on the sample project. The way I started this sample, I, I did it like I usually do. I just started with some chords. So this is the roads. <laughs> Like you guys know, I print everything out to audio. Um, this is the MIDI. After I had that main idea down, this the sound is from that um, Rhodes Affair plugin that I usually use. Um, I did some compression, Pro Q3 just cutting out the lows, micro shift, doing a little bit of chorus. I used this utility plugin just to put the volume up a little bit. Um, micro shift brings the whole volume down a little, and then Valhalla Room for the reverb. Then I used this. I actually did this bad. It's the same chords, same stuff. This is the sound from Analog Lab, a random preset that I don't know. Um, same chords and everything, same MIDI. Just some Pro Q3 cutting out the lows. compressor again the utility just bringing the volume up a little bit but i could have just done it here on the output on the buff compressor then wider i don't even have a reverb on this after i had that those two sounds this is a solid idea right so i grabbed my bass and i recorded this uh baseline I just recorded this with my P bass that I have I use archetype uh, Corey Wong with this J bass preset and then I just mess um, a little bit with the amp 
and a couple of the values here on the EQ and everything. Tuners, I can know <laughs> which notes I'm playing. And the capacitor, I used to use R bass, but I don't have Waves plugins anymore. So I'm using the capacitor to just create this little bed of pure bass sounds below the actual bass. So I had these three. It's already a pretty solid idea. I just grabbed that sing MIDI, put that into Mellotron and went scroll through some sounds and then I found this. I'm pretty sure I use this arpeggiator uh, thing on Ableton. If you use Ableton, you know that Ableton has, has uh, media effects. And I often use this arpeggiator thing to create arpeggios out of these uh, chords. So I just use that on Mellotron, had this arp thing going. I pretty much use almost the same plugins every single time. So Wolf Compressor, that's my main compressor. Cassette Shaper Box to create some panning and Valhalla Vintage Verb from the reverb. So I had this these four sounds. I went into Splice and started to look to find some vocal chops, vocal things. And then I found this. This is the vocal chop from Splice. I just duplicated it. This how it sounds raw. It already has some reverb on it. So again, I added a Wolf compressor, a Valhalla delay, vintage verb, and shaper box for the sidechain. I love side chaining things. I just put the shaper box on the very end of the effects chain. So it creates this movement. I think it adds some character, some rhythm to the sample. I really like doing that. And this is the main thing of the sample, I think. There are these accents. This is something that I started doing pretty recently. And this actually changed the way that I make um, music nowadays. I started producing on FL Studio. When you produce for a long time on a single DAW, you start to pick up habits and you start to understand those habits as the way of making music. So in FL Studio, what we usually do is go through packs. So I go through packs and then I, if I'm looking for a snare, I'll go through this and go back and then find some snare sounds in here, right? Well, I've been using Ableton for like two years, I think, a year and a half. And I had this same habit of going through, if I'm looking through one shots, I'm going through my packs. And then I try to find, okay, like I'm going to this now my back and try and find some one shots, right? Something that I didn't realize and I just started doing is that you can, if I'm looking for a kick drum, you can search for kick drums and you can do all results so now i'm not just looking through specific packs and the problem with looking through specific packs is that you cannot memorize everything so you're always going to come back to the same packs or you might download something that you never use in this method and i'm pretty sure you can do now can do this now on fl studio 21 but it, it works better on ableton is that i can search for kick go through all results and this is all my kick samples that i have and i can go through these and find the kick samples that I want. So when I'm making samples now, I usually go in here, search through accents, and then I have a bunch of accents instead of going through specific packs. And this is how I found all these little accents that I added, just scrolling through here. And it's just so much better because you have so many options, so many sounds. There's a lot of uh, randomness. You find random sounds, stuff that you would never use. This is my tip for this video. Start looking through all results. This is how I find sounds from kick drums and snares and hi-hats to accents like bass sounds, uh, whatever, right? Um, and I'm pretty sure you can do this now on FL Studio. But as I said, it works better on Ableton because Ableton uh, syncs your project with the loop. So if I'm making a beat or if I'm playing this and I play and I play a, a drum loop, it syncs.
and Apple Studio cannot do that. But yeah, this is how I found all these samples. I just searched through samples, in, through accents in here, and I started looking, and then I found all these little things. Um, this is pretty cool. I actually put this down an octave, and then I had to stretch it to fit this specific uh, rhythm that I wanted. This like triplet uh, rhythm. Originally, it doesn't play it this way. Um, I found this sound. Which served as a good way to transition between sections. This other one. Again, just helping the transition. I had the same accent looping through the whole sample. This one. Again, just to make the transition. And this one. So with everything and the accents and shit. And then on this other section, I just had the Mellotron ARP with the bass and the vocals. a breakdown section and then the last section so yeah this is basically the sample as i can see i grouped all these accents on the main group i don't have any effects um for these little ones i just did some pro q3 easy effects vintage verb but the full thing I had to put a bunch of reverb so the transition could work. These ones, I don't even have effects on them. And this like crash little thing, I just um, bring down the, the high cut a little bit and a vintage verb. So this is the entire sample. Okay, so now we're on the B project. This is the next day. Um, I brought the sample into this new project. The way that I structure my samples, I have the whole sample playing out the whole like minute or two minutes or whatever. And I just stem out the most important parts, like the parts that people probably will want stemmed out. So the bass. This is the same file, as I can see, like this is the entire sample and this is the stems. But this is just, this part, it's just this part with no bass and no vocals. So I just stem out the bass, which is the same thing, and the vocals. Again, it's just the same audio file. So first thing that I've done is to chop it up and put that last part in the beginning and use it as an intro. <laughs> And then for the main bounce, this is the drums. Simple bounce. The way I do drums on Ableton is just uh, dragging the audio files through the playlist and doing it doing it in this way it, it took me too long again talking about you know stuff that you're doing one doll and when you're switch over to another one i could not get myself to make drums through the midi in ableton and it doesn't work the same way that it does in fl studio fl studio is built for that but i really enjoy making drums this way this way because it makes it so easy for me to just switch things up a little bit so i originally had this kick pattern just playing again but it's just so easy for me to go in here 
drag this kick drum from uh, the downbeat and put it just a little bit later to create a different bounce and everything. Um, this is the kick drum, pretty simple one. It's like a rack kick drum. I originally had this other one. But I ended up switching to the kick one. I really like those thumpy uh, kicks. But, and this is to me another advantage of working with audio, is that you find the these happy mistakes. So this kick drum that I originally started with has this texture on it that I really wanted but it doesn't have the thump that I needed. So when I put this on top, the tail of that texture blended with the rack kick and created this rack kick with this texture that I wouldn't have, that I wouldn't have before. And in some drum, uh, some kicks, I had this, these two uh, blends in some of this, I just had the rack kick alone, just to create a little bit of variation. And for the hi-hats, I just did a simple pattern. play with the kick for the snare again pretty simple uh, the snare sample itself is a little bit offset when I had these three elements this is like the, the meat of the beat it's almost done and then I just try to find uh, some percussion loops or or stuff like that and I found this that I felt that it complemented uh, the hi-hats a lot so I just had some Pro Q3 cutting out the lows and a little bit of the highs some Valhalla room and it blended in really well The way I'm finding these is just searching percussion all results and going through a bunch of these until I find stuff that I like. It usually doesn't take me long at all. And then I found this other one, uh, other percussion loop. As y'all can see, I'm doing some side chain to the kick, especially because of those toms. So they don't clash and I had to cut a little bit of the lows because of that too. Um, I also did some side chain on the bass. I always side chain my kick to the bass or the 808s or, you know. After I did this, it was pretty much done. I just wanted another bass to create another section. And then I used this resonant chord bass that I've used. I've used this bass a bunch of times before. Following the root notes, pretty simple. And the way that I found the notes again is just using the tuner. A lot of people sometimes they ask me uh, for like the bass MIDI or what are, what are the bass notes. Just grab the bass stem and put it sooner. This is literally how I found uh, the notes to make these be like the day, the day after. Um, and then I just found a, a little some stuff to add so this feel. This is transition to the drums. And this little like vocal thing that it the original the original sounded like like this. I just reversed it, cut it, put it up to to create this riser and some Valhalla room. And this is basically the entire beat. I just had this playing and then repeat the same structure three times. And this is the entire thing. Um. I hope this video is not too long and this is how I made this beat from scratch. I'm gonna play it in full and I hope I see you guys maybe next week or in two weeks. I'm still trying to figure out a, a schedule for this channel but hope you enjoyed this video and peace.